Hey guys, on today's episode, I'm gonna get a wine kit started. Now this is a Cellarcraft showcase kit, and these are of the fancier end of wine kits. It's actually pretty ridiculous because this kit is a six gallon kit, but it includes 4.75 gallons of concentrate. So that's really, really high. Usually what you'll see is something more along the lines of like one and a half gallons of concentrate to make a six gallon kit. So that's kind of what you'll see with the more premium kits. Something else this kit includes is grape skins. So that's kind of why I chose this kit. This is a Cabernet Sauvignon and it's from Sonoma Valley. So all pretty premium stuff. I'm not gonna follow the instructions exactly and I'll, I'll tell you the things that I'm doing different than the instructions and why I'm doing it that way, but they are pretty good instructions. So feel free to follow them um, and you'll really probably make a pretty good wine. Uh, if you like these types of videos, just make sure to click the little subscribe button in the bottom and follow my channel. But I'll get started just by showing you what comes with um, a kit like this. It comes with grape pomace or grape skins, and that's, that's really what's going to set apart a lot of these more premium kits from the more budget kits. It's going to come with oak cubes. These are, I believe these are, oh, these are Hungarian oak, medium toast. Um, it comes with your standard clearing, fining agents, bentonite, um, cheetosan. Uh, it comes with, it looks like, I want to guess this is probably EC1118. Yep. This is almost in every single wine kit is this yeast. It's really, really reliable. Uh, <clears throat> Kiesel Souls, ugh, I don't know how to say, Kiesel Sol. Potassium metabisulfite, and a lot of this stuff I'm actually not going to use because the one thing I'm going to deviate from on these kits is I'm not going to make it in one month like they say you can. So I'll let this thing go for a while, and I'll also do some things with this kit to really kind of pump it up a little bit. So in one month, it just won't really be ready to drink if you do things the way I'm going to do it, but in one year, it'll make a little bit of a better wine. It also has potassium sorbate, and that I won't use unless I ended up adding any sugar, which I probably wouldn't do. Um, there's labels. These are these just say Cellarcraft Cabernet Sauvignon. <clears throat> Again, I probably won't use those because I spend a lot of time making, you know, getting all the labels off my wine bottles. So to add more labels, I end up um, kind of hitting myself later for it. What I'll usually do is I'll add little tags to my bottles to identify them. Oh, it also comes with some more of like a oak chips. There's some French oak medium toast and some French oak heavy toast. So that's all like really, really good stuff to come with a wine kit. And then here's the, the big thing here is this huge bag of juice. So this is what's gonna get it done here. So I'll go ahead and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to pour this into a primary fermenter, which in my case I'm just going to use a clean food grade bucket with a lid. So we'll go ahead and we'll do that. So now what you'd normally do is you just top this up to six gallons with clean um, chlorine free water. So. I've got a carbon filter that I'll run this through, or you can go to the store and you can get bottled jugs of water. And really all you're gonna need is about one and a quarter gallons to do that. But this is where I'm gonna deviate from the plan a little bit. And all I'm really gonna do is add about um, two quarts of water, so a half gallon. And to do that, I'll just rinse this bag with my chlorine-free carbon filtered water and just top this up a little bit. and. The reason I'm gonna do that is uh, I could just leave it be like that, <clears throat> fermented a little bit more concentrated and just make a little bit of a bolder wine. And that's something I'll actually pretty commonly do. And it won't drink well in one month, but it'll be, like I said, it'll be better in a year. It'll be a little bit more of a full bodied red wine. But I'm gonna even take it one step further. And I've got uh, in my barrel back here, 
an Old Vine Zinfandel from Lodi. And I've got a lot of it. I've got 30 gallons of it, and I've got a lot of things kind of I'm planning to do with it. But what I'll do is I'll add about a gallon of that Old Vine Zin to this Cabernet Sauvignon. And I'll add it actually during fermentation, so after things are already bubbling. And that'll be a little bit less water that I've added. It'll be a little bit of a better fuller bodied wine, like I said. And it'll help it integrate a little bit better if I add it early on during that fermentation versus blending later on. And I do think that'll be a good pair because that's a pretty oaked, um, pretty heavily oaked Zin. And it's a pretty common California blend to add a little bit of Zinfandel to a Cabernet Sauvignon. So it should be a pretty good mix. But what I'll do now is I'll just go ahead and I'll, I'll rinse this with my, you know, roughly two quarts of water. And I'll pour it right back in here to top up just a little bit more. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add my, my oak chips. So these are the French oak medium toast. And then I'll add the French oak heavy toast. And honestly, usually I would add the heavier toast later on and the lighter toast earlier on. Usually the lighter the toast, the harsher the tannin. And the heavier the toast, the more of like a kind of smoke that you'll get from it. But because these are finely ground kind of chips, I don't really want to deal with them later on. So I'm going to add these early and I'll stick with the cubes just like the instructions say later on. Something else I'm going to add, this is a tannin. You can add any powdered tannin, but this stuff's FT Rouge. It's specifically made to be used during primary fermentation. And what that'll do is it'll try to kind of bind up some tannin, um, create a little bit more mouthfeel, lock down a little bit of color. And it's just something I like to do with my wines. But now what I'll do is I'll stir this up really, really good. And then here's another area where I'm going to drift off of the instructions. So normally you put your grape skins in with the mesh bag that's provided. And I've done these kits before and that works pretty well, but it kind of inflates and bulges up. And it's just a little bit of a pain to work with. So I'm going to do it more like I would do a traditional red wine from grapes. I'm just going to pour the skins right in and each day, a couple times a day, I'll churn them up, which will kind of replace the punch down that you would do if you're making a red wine from grapes. And when it does come time to pull this off the primary fermentation into carboy, I'll sift off what I can and um, I'll probably end up pouring it through a strainer just to you know, get most of those skins out of there before that goes into the carboy. And these skins are a huge pain. So what I've got here is I've got a clean utility knife and I'm just gonna cut this bag because otherwise to pour these out of that little nozzle is gonna just really challenging. So here I'll kind of open this up and instead of squeezing these out, I'm just gonna almost dump them in. And that just works so much better. And you can do the same thing here and rinse your bag out a little bit afterwards just to get that last little bit of grape skin out. And now I'm going to stir it up really good one more time because in those grape skins is um, a lot of sugar. So I just want to make sure that it's really well mixed in here. And now I'm going to take two readings for my notes. One's going to be specific gravity. And then one's going to be pH. So I'm getting 3.72 for my pH, which is, I would say, shockingly high. But what I also think is that um, whatever's in that bag, including probably a little bit of acid, um, just really probably hasn't mixed in well yet. So I'll take a reading in a day or so here too, just to see where we're at. 
Um, my, my bricks level is 25 and a half, which is really, you know, right on the money for what I would want for a red wine like this. Uh, that comes out to about 1.110 if you work in specific gravity. So those are good numbers. And again, I'll check that acid again um, tomorrow because I'd honestly like to see a number probably a little closer to, you know, 3.5, 3.6. It's going to climb a little bit during fermentation and where I'd really like to end is closer to 3.7, you know, not necessarily start there. So we'll see how it goes, but I, I really think that number is going to go down a little bit once things really start to mix in here. And now all that's left to do is get a yeast starter going and add the yeast starter to your must. And what, what the instructions will tell you is just to sprinkle the yeast on top and that will work generally pretty good, but if you want to have an even better chance of making sure that wine gets started, I would always make a yeast starter. And all you're really going to do is take some warm water, should be about 105 degrees Fahrenheit, pour the yeast in, and once it starts to kind of snap, crackle, and pop, you can start to add a little bit of that wine to it until um, it's about... I would say until you've probably tripled or quadrupled the original volume of water. And the other thing that'll do is it'll make sure that the temperature of that yeast starter is close enough to the temperature of the must that doesn't stunt anything or shock anything when it goes in. Ideally, you want it to be within 10 degrees Fahrenheit, the magic number, and that'll usually make sure everything goes smoothly. And I did mention that I will be adding some Old Vine Zinfandel, you know, already finished wine to this. But I don't want to add that until after my fermentation started because that little bit of alcohol in there could make things a little bit more challenging to start. So we'll, we'll wait and we'll probably add that on about day three once things are fermenting. So we'll just get this yeast starter going and pop it in the wine. It's been about 48 hours and you can tell it's fermenting really nicely. The skins are floating up above the, the liquid. Um, it's got a really, really fruity smell and things are going really well. The pH has dropped um, even before it even started fermenting to about 3.5, which is a pretty good place to be pre-fermentation. Uh, I've been monitoring the temperature. I'm trying to keep the temperature around 75 degrees, which my basement's a little bit cooler than that, so I've got this little space heater here. I set it to 70 but because it's so close and there's a little bit of heat generated from the active fermentation it seems to be holding right at about 75. So because we're really churning along pretty good here I think it's safe to go ahead and add the the old vine Zinfandel that I've pulled off but I'm not gonna add it all at once. I'm gonna add it over the span of a couple hours just so I don't really stump that fermentation at all. And the other thing that whether you do this, you know, crazy thing I'm doing or not, the thing that you are going to have to do is you're going to have to punch down this cap of skins um, at least once a day. And ideally, I'd recommend two to three times a day. And you can just do that with something like a serving spoon or I've got some small homemade punch down tools that I'll use. But in this case, this is like a pretty not intense cap of skins compared to if you're actually making a wine from grapes where that cap will just push against you so hard. So this is really pretty easy to kind of stir up. You just want to keep it wet. You don't want those skins to, to dry out on you. So just clean the spoon and stir it up a couple times a day. And what you'll do now is you'll just monitor this and keep an eye on the specific gravity or the, the bricks of the must. And once it reaches, if you're going in specific gravity, um, something like 0.995, it'll be time to get that off the skins and get it into a carboy um, topped up with a with an airlock on it or if you're measuring in bricks anything below zero something like negative one and you'll see the cap just won't really rise much anymore when it is about done fermenting um, it'll sort of start to you know stay a little bit sunken in the in the the must so here we go I'll go ahead and um, do my kind of churn up and just start pouring in my wine. 
But that should be really, you know, the main steps to making a kit like this. Um, if you have any questions, just post them in the comments and I'll, I'll try my best to answer them for you and hopefully this will help you out if you're making a kit like this. And while this is fermenting, you're going to want to just keep a loose lid on this. No need to, you know, button it down. It's got a lot of flow of CO2 going out of here. There's really no oxidation concerns yet at this point when things are fermenting. So yeah, keep a loose lid on it. And that's really all there, all there is to it at this point. Thanks for watching.